What's well, good you guys, Zach Dowd here. In today's video, we're gonna be building a DIY parking block. We're gonna start with making a form to pour the concrete into, and then in the future, we can use this form to build out future parking blocks. So the first step to making the forms is gonna be getting some dimensions. One way to go about getting some dimensions is you can actually just trace a parking block and use those exact measurements. Or you can use some of the measurements that I'll leave in the description down below. Now that we have dimensions, to go pick up some supplies from Home Depot. Let's go do it. All right, first thing we want to grab is one can of flat protective enamel. Next, we'll grab this high performance red enamel. Third, we need some caulking for the forms, or we can use Bondo. Fourth, you'll need a caulking gun if you don't already have one. Next, we're going to find the melamine panels. This is the wood we'll use for the forms. Alternatively, you can use thick plywood. Next, we'll grab four bags of 5,000 PSI concrete mix because it's stronger. Seven, we'll grab one long rebar that we can cut up and put into the concrete. It's gonna be a tight squeeze driving home. All right, we're back home, got all the supplies. You definitely make this even cheaper in finding scrap wood or just using the things that you have around the house. I'm excited to use this 5,000 PSI concrete mix. The melamine was about 20 bucks. The clear enamel was four bucks. The red safety paint was $6. The caulking was 16. Screws were $7. Concrete was 21 bucks. The rebar was four made it to $78 total for everything, which is fairly cheap when you think about it. You definitely even go cheaper options and find alternative solutions. The melamine is definitely a more high-end wood and you can definitely just use regular plywood as well. It might be a little bit harder during the curing process. The point of the melamine is that it's a nice smooth surface, so there'll be less honeycombs and less things coming up, we'll have less struggle. So it'll make it a little bit easier if you spend the extra couple bucks. So essentially we're building this curb upside down, which makes it a lot easier to find the angle. You just have to think about what the top of the curb is gonna be, the width of it, and then what the width of the bottom is gonna be, and that'll give you the angle. But just as a template rule of thumb, three inches at the top and about 6.5 inches at the bottom will give you a nice template for the perfect banked curb. Made some simple measurements, just marked it straight up onto the wood because I'm definitely not a pro at cutting or measurements or any of this stuff. So I just wanted to make sure I was extra safe about it. I'm gonna get the top cut first and then the side. And then hopefully I could just make the second side with a template from the first one. After one side was cut, I basically put it on top of the other wood and traced that out. I made all my cuts essentially the pieces to the puzzle, and now it's time to put it together. Unfortunately, I don't have footage of the final form, but here's how it looked before I started pouring concrete. Now we just mix the concrete. The general rule for 5,000 PSI mixing water to ratio is one 80 pound bag require up to four quarts of water. As a rule of thumb, I always prefer adding more water than adding too much. Wow, so it looks like it actually only took me about two bags to pour all of this, which is pretty awesome. Awesome. this is seven feet long so next I'm just gonna hit it with the wood float to kind of even everything out I added too much concrete but basically just to level it all out smooth it all out and the wood float also helps bring all the water to the surface and um, after that we're gonna get some some to some vibrating all right kind of buttered it up next up is the vibrating part what I'm gonna do is try using my jigsaw just hitting it on the side and hoping that it'll vibrate it. The idea is here making it just a nice solid piece of concrete. If the jigsaw doesn't work, I'm gonna use a hammer, just tapping it on the side. You can use a sander, there's all sorts of different ways. So now as I'm hitting it with a hammer, you can start to see everything what's happening. It's all coming to the surface, starting to level up. The jigsaw did help a little bit, but I think just little vibrations with a hammer just going along the sides is going to actually work perfect. Well, we've had a little bit of a hiccup. There's a hole in the tarp. Let me, let me go in the garage. It's a bit windy out here. So I'm not super bummed that we can't water cure because this is a whole new thing for me. It's not a make or breaker, but it was kind of interesting. I was posting a lot of my build process on my Instagram stories and I got a lot of mixed 
feedback. Like almost everyone that gave me a comment or responded to my Instagram stories in a direct message said something differently, which made me think like, wow, almost everyone has a different interpretation of what water carrying for a parking block might be. Now, not everybody, it just happened to be that I had a lot of different ideas. Like some people were saying, you need to throw the form straight into water right away. Some people were saying you need to take it out of the form, wait a couple days and put it in. So. I did some research from some concrete experts and I'm just going to tell you what water curing is for the record, set the record straight, water curing is a curing process. So if your parking block or concrete is already cured, it's kind of pointless to start a water curing process. So unlimitedconcreteconcepts.com says that after new concrete is poured and finished, the concrete begins its curing process. By keeping the surface wet, you are keeping the concrete temperature low. Be sure to start watering the concrete in the morning and keeping water throughout the hard, hottest part of the day. So the point being is that you're slowing down the curing process. And the reason you're slowing down the curing process is because when you mix in concrete with water, it starts to cure immediately, which is how you get cracks and crumbles and all those honeycombs and all those different situations is because it's supposed to rapid set, but the problem with that is that it can set too fast, leading for cracks and other issues. So the water curing process slows it all down. What I have been doing is the moist curing, and what that is is you essentially are pouring water on it every hour or so, because I'm working from home right now, thanks to this quarantine, it is allowing me to have the time to come out here and spray down every, every hour. It's kind of good, actually. It's almost like breaking me up from the screen a little. Especially since it's a parking block and we're gonna be bashing this thing, I'm trying to learn my slappies and improve the slappies. We want the concrete to be really, really hard. So I'm just gonna moist it about every hour. I'm not gonna do it for the full seven days. I'm probably gonna do it for two or three days and then pull it because yeah, I'm just an impatient skateboarder. Pull the curbs out of the forms four days after the initial pour and continue the moist curing process for two more days until eventually the curb is fully dried. I also try to cover the curbs from direct sunlight during the moist curing to avoid drying out too fast. Next is my favorite tool, the rub rig. This is where the magic happens and the fine tuning of the curb shape is really formed. You want to make sure the curb is 100% cured before rub bricking because essentially we're grinding off all the unwanted and unnecessary concrete. This is also filed down our curb to a nice smooth surface for painting in the next step. Now you're just gonna use your high performance red enamel for the first layer. If you have regular red paint that works as well, you actually don't have to do red, it's just more of an aesthetic choice. Altogether, I actually ended up with four parking blocks. I only did two pours, but both times they broke right in the middle. And the reasoning for that is because I didn't end up using rebar, because I didn't have the right blade or tools to cut any rebar. I bought some at Home Depot, it's in the budget. But I just didn't have the right tools, so I just winged it and went without it. So it goes to show you, anything over four or five feet probably is gonna break. You can probably just get the small strips from rebar, from Home Depot instead of doing the big long ones like I did and you don't have to cut them, you could just stick them in. So yeah, that was lesson learned. Use rebar. But honestly, I'm not that bummed or disappointed because having four curbs is pretty cool too. They're a lot easier and lighter to move around or I can patch them together, I can put them together if I want to, bring them to a spot, They're kind of more manageable. Last couple of things I would say I learned from this project were definitely let the caulking dry for 24 hours before pouring the concrete because yeah, the caulking stuck to some of the concrete that I poured, so 24 hours, let it set before you put the concrete in. The other thing is definitely once you're done either moist curing, water curing, or just regular dry curing, walking away curing, that's fine. After that, definitely wait four or five days before you paint it because otherwise the paint starts soaking into the uncured concrete and then you're just going down slippery slope. And then after that, it's basically just lacquer and rub brick. That's maintenance. Now I'm finally figuring out slappies like today, literally today. I've had the curb now for, it's been one week and today I'm finally actually I got the hint, I felt it, I figured it out. There's a hint to it. You kinda gotta go into it like it's a backside smith on transition. That's the foot stance. And then, at least for a backside sloppy, so yeah. Pretty hyped on it, got a curb to do them on now. You can build a curb to your house, your backyard. Right now's the perfect time to build something in your backyard, at your house, or nearby. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're not already, hit that thumbs up button if you did enjoy it. Spread it to the masses. See you in the next one, mash.